Hello everyone, welcome back to another Be Connected session. I'm Emily, your host for today, once again. Um, today we're looking at all about apps, that's what we're talking about. Um, everything from apps just to get you started to something more intricate. Um, we've got app suggestions. We're gonna go through how to manage apps, um, how to look, not look after them, but how to tidy them, keep them um, looked after on your device, either on your phone or your tablet, if there's something like that. Today, I am fortunate enough to have two tablets handy. One is an Android device, so I can answer Android specific questions. And one is an iPad, so Apple related products on that side as well. Pardon me, Siri's chatting at me. Um, let me know in chat which you have, um, and if you have a preference even. Um, I can spend more time on the iPad if more people have an iPad or I can go more in depth on the Android as well. Excellent, so without further ado, let's jump through the next slide. Excellent, so what we're gonna look at today, what we're gonna cover, we're first gonna jump onto the Be Connected website. Of course, this is a Be Connected session, um, and what, we're, what I'm talking about today is taking off of the Be Connected website. So everything that I cover, you can find more information on, and games and other activities, on the Be Connected website. So I'll show you that in just a tick. Um, we're gonna cover what apps even are, what does the term app mean to you, um, and where do you find apps, where to download them, how to manage them, and then, yeah, again, managing apps, their data usage and notifications. So um, we're gonna keep an eye out on what the apps are doing on our device. Are they just you know, sitting there idle, or are they actively downloading things um, while we're not using them? which can be both helpful and a hindrance, and we'll talk about why that is in a bit. Um, we'll talk about some app recommendations, everything from um, where to find your banking, um, listening to music, podcasts, and a few library apps that we have as well. And then we'll get to a question and answer time at the end if I missed anything or if there were any sort of squirrely questions you want to throw at me as well. You can do anything like that. Excellent. So be connected. So it's um, Be Connected is a Australian government initiative <laughs> um, which is getting people online and confident in their online skills. Um, it's not just those who have never used a computer, it's all age groups. Um, even if you're pretty confident on the computer, you can gain some extra skills on here as well. Um, they've even added a few new games. There's a typing game, um, memory games, things like that, just to get you used to using the keyboard, the mouse, or if you're at, um, viewing it on a touch screen, they've got a few skill tests that teach you how to swipe, close windows, things like that. So it has everything from very, very beginner level, as in you've never seen a computer before, all the way up to more advanced stuff and telling you how to use things like Google Earth, how to do online shopping, and all these I've covered in previous sessions. And at the end, I'll tell you where you can view those as well. So let's have a look at Be Connected. Let me jump to a new screen. Let's see if that works. There you go. So this is the Be Connected website. You can find it just by typing Be Connected right into Google. Um, today, we're gonna to be looking at apps. So let's jump into the topic library and have a look at what they have on offer. Again, they start from the absolute basics, so essential skills to start off. Um, internet safety, passwords, how to feel safe online, things like that. Um, and today, we're going into apps. So everything I talk about here is covered in this section. So if you were to explore it, you could jump into each of the segments that we're gonna to cover today and you can view them in short video format. Um, if videos aren't your thing, at the bottom there are also PDF documents that you can download. You can print them off and send them to a friend or someone who's interested and that's another way to get them actively be connected. They don't even have to have a computer necessarily. Excellent, that's Be Connected. Um, it's had a bit of a, a fresh new look added, so that's great. Obviously, people are using it and they're just keeping it fresh, so I love that. Um, makes it more interesting for me as someone who visits it quite often. <laughs> Excellent, so let's start off with the big question. What are apps? What even are they? Um, so I've got a few points here. They're just downloadable software for your mobile, mobile or tablet device. So an app isn't necessarily something that you download onto a desktop computer or a laptop. Um, at that point, we call them programs and they're usually far more complex. Um, so it's just short for applications. Um, they're helpful tools that add to your um, experience of using a tablet or your phone. 
um, and they build up essentially what makes your phone or tablet so useful. Um, you will, everything is built up of apps. That's just how you access your device. Um, even anything from browsing the internet to looking at your mail, these are all through apps, so applications. Um, they're represented by the little icons on your home screen. So again, as I've got on the picture here, I've got Facebook and Twitter up close. I've got a few here. Um, later on when I'm showing the screen, I'll bring it up to be the larger image of my video. That way we're not going to have to be squinting to find everything. Um, and yeah, they're designed to work on a smaller screen. So a lot of them will have quite bold text um, in comparison to what you might see on a laptop, for example. Um, and they're just a lot easier to use on a handheld device. Yeah, so let's jump through. I'm gonna talk more about apps on this slide. I just didn't have room <laughs> for everything I wanted to talk about in the general introduction. So the way to get apps, you download them from your either Apple App Store or Google Play Store, depending on which type of device you have. Um, out there, the main competitors out there are, so Apple iPads and iPhones, so Apple technology. Um, Apple being the software developer as well as making the phones and iPads. And then there's Android. Now Android are a sort of a large collective of um, sort of more independent tech groups. So what I have here is a tablet. It isn't an Android tablet. It runs on Android software, but the actual tablet is a Lenovo tablet, which you can see here. Um, you might have a Samsung, let me go back, or any other type that just isn't Apple. That'll run on Android. So from there, you're accessing the Google Play Store to download apps. Um, that's the safest place to get them. Um, and it's well laid out. And that's just sort of where you'll find official apps. Um, so to keep in mind, many use data from the internet, while some don't. So keep in mind, and we'll talk about data usage in a little bit. Um, some apps don't require you to use the internet. They just are, they exist. Something like, and I'll bring one up if I can, something like the Notes app, for example, which is on iPads. This, I'll make sure there's no text on it. Okay, it's just a welcome. Someone's written 12 days of Christmas on this one for some reason. Um, the Notes app, for example, is essentially a note-taking app. It doesn't require access to the internet and that can be used offline. Um, many apps like uh, video streaming apps or places where you have to get information from the internet, which is most apps, um, will need to be connected in order to function. Some will have limited functionality if they're not connected to the internet. For example, if you've got a music player app, if you don't need to stream the actual information from the internet itself, so if you've saved music on your app, that doesn't need to be connected to the internet to work um, because many of the songs will already be saved to your actual device and you can listen to them that way. So not all apps require the internet, um, at least to function in your everyday, but most do, I'd say. Um, they're made by larger companies as well as small developers, which we'll look at when we browse the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. <laughs> Getting it mixed up already. Um, but they're built up of large groups that are, are very official and spend all their time just making apps. And then there are also smaller groups that don't have the large funding or the larger staff, um, but still make some pretty quirky apps. And I'll look at those as well. There are some great ones out there. Um, they have many levels of complexity. So something like the Notes app, which is again on your iPad. And uh, all Androids will have a similar app. It just may not be called Notes. Um, but the Notes app is a very low level of complexity. It just records what you've written or spoken if you're doing um, voice text version. Um, it'll record that, but otherwise it doesn't have, you know, a large number crunching system. It's not running video. It's not having to use a lot of your um, device's memory storage or its um, RAM usage. It's a lot of words that I don't necessarily understand fully, so I won't go in too deep with those. <laughs> So, um, and there's an app for nearly everything. So I think we might have a look at the App Store unless we go into downloading apps. So we, we'll jump into the App Store and the Google Play Store in just a tick. If you've got your device at home available, get that set up, ready to go. Um, so the place to find apps, to get new apps, is through the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Um, on each of your devices, they will be pre-installed as one of the system apps. 
um, system apps are apps that can't be deleted off of your device because they are a functionality of the actual app, uh, sorry, actual tablet and need them to function. So something like we've got, I'm on the um, iPad again, the App Store logo down here, the little, again, I'm sorry if you can't see it, the actual blue app symbol that cannot be deleted off of your device because it's the only way to get new apps. Um, so of course you can't get rid of that or you'd never be able to get an app again. <laughs> so those can't be deleted um, by normal means. I'm sure you could you know, hack your own device if you felt so inclined, but norm in the normal fashion, you can't delete them. Um, so we'll jump into the app store on this side. So for you, it might look similar to this um, and I'll explain that in just a tick. Um, when you're signing up, into the App Store or Google Play Store, you do not have to give your payment details. Um, they do push it um, because they wanna know your, of course, your payment information. They wanna promote their apps that they've made. They want them to be bought or supported in that monetary way. Um, but of course, you don't have to say yes. Oftentimes it'll say, um, would you like to add your details now? And you can say, not now, and just keep putting it off. Um, rule I have noticed today I was opening up the iPad for the first time in a while and it kept popping up with do you want to add your details please would you like to <laughs> and it kept popping up and I said no thank you no thank you um, but you don't have to there's always the option to skip so look out for that it's usually a little bit harder to see because they're promoting that um, putting your details on so that you can buy things from them um, when you pay for an app which we'll talk about in a second there are multiple ways to pay for it and I'll talk about that as well um, when searching the store, you can look by category or you could just type the name of the app you'd like or even the genre that you're looking for. So say if you're looking for music, you do it that way. You just type in music um, and checking the star ratings and user comments will let you know if it's a legitimate app, if it's been updated recently, if it's got any bugs that it needs fixing. So bugs are just errors in code that make it sort of that it doesn't function at its optimal capacity. It just it might close when you don't want it to close, it might slow down, certain buttons may not work, things like that. Um, and people will report them so that the developers know um, and that way they can fix them. That's sort of the only way they know um, other than having their own people testing their device, um, their app every, every day, I'd say. Um, and it will use your internet access to download. So keep your device on Wi-Fi. So if you're at home, use your home Wi-Fi. If you come into the library, use our Wi-Fi versus your device's actual data. Because of course, data costs money and Wi-Fi is free depending on where you are. <laughs> if you're at your own home, of course, you're paying for that internet Wi-Fi that your house gets, um, part of your telephone plan. Um, but if you're at the library, for you, it's totally free because you're not having to pay that. Um, we pay for it, we like to share. <laughs> so what I'll do, I will jump back to my screen, the big me back again and we'll have a look at both the app store and the google play store so i think oh uh, yeah let's do that i've got my app store here this is what it looks like so if i close back out i'll show you what the app looks like itself it's this blue triangle app sort of three sticks i don't know what the design is supposed to be it looks like an a which is i guess the goal um, apple are very uh, they like to keep you up to date with things they've got these sort of news stories with um, apps at the center. So this one is a, uh, a, photo, a photo app of the day sort of thing, um, some games, some things they might think that you're interested in. But what we're actually going to look at is in the bottom bar, and my apologies to anyone on an Android device who's having to wait, we'll get to you in just a tick. <laughs> so when you're using an iPad, you've got these at the bottom, these several, six, one, two, three, five. Uh, extra category windows to skim through. So currently we're on today, which is just sort of current news, um, but when you can skim through games. So if you're inclined to play games, they've got games here, or if you've got a young person in your family who really likes games and comes over just to play with your iPad perhaps. Um, apps is what we're gonna look at, and it comes into categories, as well as the arcade. So mine won't connect because I've not put my details in fully, um, the arcade is essentially a, a scoreboard where you can see your other friends that you've made. Um, I won't go too in-depth with this because it's not super important, um, but it will show 
what games stacked people have played, like what awards they've won for playing really well and things like that. It really just is a sort of a social area for people who might play lots of games um, or friends of yours who play the same games as you. And then a search bar, of course. So what we'll look at first, searching is great, especially if you know the app you're looking for. Um, but if you just jump into apps and then categories, so if I'll go back, this is what it actually looks like when you first click on apps, apps like this, it comes up with suggested apps that the um, most popular at the time. And they'll have all these little headings that help out. So popular apps, for example, so things that are up and coming, are new, are exciting, so new and noteworthy, for example. Um, apps that work with other products that Apple provides, like the Apple Pencil. But what I usually skim down to if I'm just cruising for a new app or want to find something new, there are top paid apps and top free apps. And I love to see what is popular. Um, so for example, if I go back to the first, Zoom <laughs> is the most popular app at the moment under the free category. Of course, everyone's stuck at home, everyone's having to attend meetings or webinars. <laughs> <laughs> and they're downloading the Zoom app. So that's kind of a cool way to see what trends are happening and what people are into. Um, Google Chrome, which I think is so funny because, of course, on an iPad, the default internet browser is Safari. Um, and most people don't find Safari very intuitive. It's a bit simplistic. It doesn't have all your details on it. Um, whereas Chrome can connect to other devices that you've got a Chrome account on and we'll know all of your favorite tabs and things like that and websites you like to visit often and your login for some things you tick yes to save your passwords and things. So I love that that's the second most popular free app on an Apple device. <laughs> that's a great spot to look for it. Um, another thing to keep an eye out for is in the gray underneath the title of the actual app name, you've got the developer name. Um, so if I were to go up to say something that works with that app, Pencil, let's be looking for, hmm. okay, my fault, maybe the, okay, this used to be the case, now it's not, the grey, as you probably noticed by my showing you, um, doesn't tell you the developer name, so if I click open, say Google Chrome, it should tell me the de uh, developer, so Google, and that lets you know, and then it gives you a quick, a brief intro as to what it is, so fast for browsing and searching, that's what it's sort of toting. Um, sorry, fast and secure browser, that's it. So when looking at an app and thinking, okay, that looks good, I wanna try that, um, let's have a look at it. You click it and you click on the actual text and it'll bring up more information as to what the app is, what it does, um, and a star rating. So let me, I'll talk about that in a tick as well. Maybe I should go back to that. Yeah, check the star rating and the user comments. Um, so this one, Google Chrome, has a 3.6 star rating. Not great, but not bad, not at all. Um, it's getting up there in um, positivity. It's number one in utilities. You can see that there. They get ratings on their categories and things like that. You can get an idea of how popular they are. Um, if you click on the ratings, it should bring you down to comments that people have left. For example, someone's left a disgruntled uh, one star, whereas the next person has given it a five star, which sort of balances it out and makes that mean um, skewed one way or the other. So if everyone rated it five stars, of course, that's what it would be. But because we've got a few one star and two star reviews, it's going to drop down to that 3.6 3. Um, 3. mark. Oops. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Um, something like Google Chrome, very well known, hugely used, totally fine to download. But there are other apps on here that are less official and have been made by smaller groups. And some have, um, again, bugs in code. Now, the bugs aren't always app breaking. They won't stop you from playing or using the app as it's intended, um, but you might notice it over time and it might bother you. So things like um, extremely well-known apps done by major developers like Google, who have a lot of money, um, they're gonna be making an app that you wouldn't think would have anything wrong with it. Um, when it's such a well-known developer, you wouldn't think to compromise and go, okay, well, I'll accept this bug, but no. Um, at that point, you say, well, it should be a lot better because it's a big company and they've got a reputation. Um, but if you're cruising for something else, we'll look into categories. So it's not always e easy to see where it is on the iPad. Um, they've got a whole bunch they want you to see first, like videos that you can download, 
here we go, categories. So it's a little ways down, it's underneath the free apps section. And you can go into the top categories and have a look at what they offer. So for example, they've got things like, you know, oh, um, augmented reality apps, which are a lot of fun. Augmented reality is where you um, take a video of your surroundings. So have a live video um, running through your device. And what will happen is the app that you pick, the augmented reality, will put down a little um, something within the screen onto the ground. It won't actually physically be there, but while viewing it through your screen, it'll look as though there's something there. Um, one that we've been playing with recently at the library is a dinosaur app um, where you'll walk around and little dinosaurs will walk, walk past on the floor and they'll look as though they're actually there. It's a lot of fun. You can zoom in and have a look and things like that. Um, so that's just what AR apps are if you're interested. Otherwise, we've got several other categories, um, everything from health and fitness to finances, kids stuff, shopping, utilities, weather, all of that good stuff. Um, and what they do, so if you look at weather, they'll bring up the more popular apps first, the apps we love. So this is what the actual um, Apple has suggested you use. And then top paid and top free. Now, there are a lot of weather apps of varying um, levels of complexity. So it's up to you to decide what you'd like to check out. Um, there's a Bureau of Meteor Meteorology, can't say it, um, which is just dedicated to the Australian rain radar. So if you're looking out for rain, and very keen for it, that's an app for you. Um, otherwise, you can just pick and choose. I do recommend checking the reviews first, seeing what works, um, because, you, because your device was bought in this country. Um, it'll preset with Australia related apps. So it's not going to give you the weather for America, for example. Um, it's going to let you have Australian weather. Um, so yeah, check out the apps, the file size, if that's something you're keen to keep an eye out for. If you have a limited amount of um, storage space left on your device, um, that's something to keep a keen eye out for. You might want to free up some space with some different apps that maybe are a little lighter. Um, and take up fewer space, less space, I should say. So that's the App Store. If anyone has a question or would like to pop in a comment, please do so in the chat or the question area and I'll get to it as well. So that is the Apple App Store. Let's have a look at the Google Play Store and just see if, if the differences are anything major. I've never found um, either way to be too different. And if you can figure out one, you can often figure out the other just because they're sort of intuitive in that way. So this is the Google Play Store. I prefer it just because it's a little tidier. Let's see if I can, if it will recognize, I might turn my screen brightness down then. Um, I just prefer the Google Play Store just in design for the most part. Um, for me, it comes up with previously installed apps. It's actually dark, that's okay. Um, so we've got Libby here, Microsoft Teams, because we're at work, of course, Netflix, things like that. So it brings up apps that you've already installed. Um, you might have already deleted them as well, and they're still going to sit there going, did you want to reinstall it? Would you like it back? So you're never really going to be without without your apps, even if you just um, if you delete and uninstall them, which I'll show you how to do in a little bit. Um, they'll go through just updated apps and things like that. One I've already downloaded is this daily art, which we'll look at in a little bit because it's a lot of fun. Um, and it would say either install or open. And because I've already downloaded it, it's going to say open. And from here, you can actually uninstall your apps as well. So say if you really didn't want this app, you're done with it, you can uninstall it from here. But I can also show you how you uninstall it from your home page. So not too different in design and style and what they're happy to show. Um, yeah, that's the Google Play Store. Because it's not the app store, it doesn't just sell apps. You can also find um, movies as well as eBooks and things like that. So let's see what's popular if it loads. <laughs> cool. So new releases, things you can either borrow, you can borrow digital things for a price or you can download them to keep onto your device as well. They're about $8, $7 on average. Um, and that's an okay price. But of course, you can come to the library and get everything for free. <laughs> and we are open again. Get excited, everybody. Excellent. Okay, so that's the Google Play Store. Not too different. Same setup, sort of familiar um, in comparison to 
uh, Apple App Store. So um, not a major difference between the two. Of course, if you have a preference, let me know in the chat. <laughs> Excellent, let's go back to our PowerPoint slide. Please let me know if it's not coming up on your screen. Excellent. So we've had a look at where to get apps, um, what to think of when downloading them. Let's talk about when you want to pay for an app. Okay. So considering the price, um, the reason you might pay for apps is because it can take out a lot of the in-app advertisements that are put on in free apps. Um, not every free app is going to throw up advertisements every time you use it, but it is the way that they pay their staff to manage the app and look after it. Um, so it's not necessarily a bad thing that it has ads on it. It does show that they're um, still you know, looking after the app and spending time on it to fix it up if it has any bugs and things like that. So it's great to see an app being supported. Um, but if apps are, oh, sorry, if ads aren't your thing, um, you can always pay for the uh, paid for version because they'll often supply a free version of the app and then a version that you can pay for to get rid of apps, but also unlock more features. Um, if you ever see in-app purchases beside the app, even if it's free, it might say in-app purchases, which is something they've had to, um, over the years, it's become mandatory to say that. If you offer um, something you can sell within the app itself, spending real currency, um, you do have to write in-app purchases within this app on the actual app before people you know, download it or buy it, just so they know. Um, it's great for um, parents that have kids um, and maybe you've got your own um, credit card details on this. Um, of course, if you've bought apps before, that's just going to be the case. Um, but if you don't want your little ones or people who just might accidentally press it, um, to download things, you wouldn't want to look up in-app purchases, but you can also find in settings ways to manage that as well. And we'll look at that in a little bit as well. Um, if you're not wanting to put your actual account details onto your device, so this would be anything from your debit card, a credit card account, or even a PayPal account. Sometimes they offer PayPal. Um, when buying online, I always recommend PayPal, um, just because it's a middleman between yourself um, so between the seller and your bank. And if anything goes wrong, PayPal can resolve it before it sort of gets taken out of your bank or they can put a charge back into your bank. Um, so if you see uh, PayPal as an option, an option, and if you've made an account and you're happy with PayPal, definitely use it. Um, I always do. Um, I get a little, I, I become a little sad when I can't pay by PayPal when something <laughs> on, online I want to buy and I go, oh, I have to get my card out. Oh. <laughs> the whole thing. Um, so you can, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to put any kind of account onto your device, if you'd like to keep it um, free of your personal details like that, you can buy physical app store and Google Play gift cards from um, physical stores at a discount sometimes. Um, oftentimes, I know at Coles and Woolies, they'll sell um, Apple app, sorry, Apple app store gift cards um, at a discounted price. So maybe like 20% off. So if you're getting you know, an amount, it might save you some money that way, um, which is quite cool. So keep that in mind. Um, you don't have to do it this way. Um, it's a fun gift. It can be good to give to um, young kids, for example, that you don't want to have them uh, give them access to your actual money account. So you can give them the sort of um, essentially a debit card, which will run out of money eventually. Um, but they can't spend over that amount and go into debt or anything like that. Um, so it's a nice idea if you're wanting to buy more premium apps. And there are some brilliant apps out there that are paid for. Um, so I definitely recommend checking those out if you're interested. But the free version of the app is always going to be brilliant as well. They want you to fall in love with the app and eventually pay for it um, if you... You know, if they manage to convince you to do so. So they're going to make it really good. Um, yeah, the ads are often minimal. Sometimes, um, especially with games, the apps will, sorry, the ads will pop up and sort of cover your whole screen. So that can be quite annoying. Um, and that promotes, again, the idea that, oh, I need to get the paid for version of the app to get rid of these ads. Um, it's not necessarily nefarious. It does, <laughs> that's annoying, but it does promote supporting the app developers who made it in the first place. But again, brilliant to get the apps for free in the first place. Um, you can also limit the amount of data used by apps in your device settings. So 
again, apps will um, automatically upload, automatically download updates if that's something you just left. Um, it's not something you can tick on at the beginning. It's just going to be assumed that you're okay with that and yes. So you'll have to go into your settings to turn that off if that's something you'd like to do. Um, oftentimes you can change your setting to say um, only download updates at this time or in the evening, for example, or something like only download updates when my Wi-Fi is connected and I'm not going to be using my data. Um, your data, of course, is going to be very quick, but again, it's going to use up the amount you paid for for your device, either your phone or your tablet, if your tablet is data enabled, if it has a SIM card in it. Um, yeah, so let's have a look at data and managing that data in your app. Oh, actually, let me see. Here it is, managing your mobile data. Um, so again, they'll use data or Wi-Fi when you initially download them, um, and then after the fact when installing apps. Some apps will require you to um, say, yes, I'd like to download this new update now, um, and then it will do that at the point that you say so. So what that looks like, I don't think I've got any badges on this device. On. So badges are those little red dots in the corner of the app that'll have a number next to them. So for example, um, I can show you one moment. Let me please change back to my other screen. <laughs> that way you'll be able to see me in large view. Excellent. So on my iPad here, which is a work iPad, so I've got a whole bunch of everything on this. Um, you can see on the mail, if you can see the mail in the center, this blue mail right there. <laughs> <laughs> it says um, mail and it has 402, um, which represents that you have 402 notifications, which in the case for email means I have 402 emails. It's not my email, it's the device's email, which we've not um, checked out recently, obviously. Um, I'll leave that as is. But another one to keep a keen eye on is the system settings. Um, so here the badge, which again is that little red dot with a number within it. The badge is telling us there are three notifications. So I'm going to click it open and these dots will follow through. So this is the settings page for your iPad or iPhone. And it says I need to update some things. So update Apple ID setting and finish setting up my iPad is something I have to do. But the main thing you have to look at is the um, software update area. For this device, we don't use it very often. So when we get an update, um, we oftentimes don't have time to update it because when you update your entire um, device, it'll oftentimes turn off and turn back on again. Um, and it might be unusable for say an hour or 30 minutes, depending on how big the update is. If you've not updated in a long time, it can take an hour or more. Um, the longest I've ever had to wait was about 45 minutes for something to update. Um, but if it's been a while, it's gonna be a much larger update for them to um, keep the device up to date. Um, so why do updates? Updates are keeping the software fresh and keeping the software um, accessible for all the apps that your device runs with um, and letting them work properly. So some apps will require that you have a system requirement of um, iPad OS whatever level. So OS just stands for operating system. Um, for Apple devices it's called an iOS. Um, because it's called an intelligent operating system because Apple likes to add the little I next to everything. Um, on an Android, it's just going to be called OS, just for operating system. Um, so it looks like my device here would like to update to the current version of iOS, and it's going to be a 13.4.1 version. Um, I'm not sure what I'm running right now. I can double check. Let's have a look. Maybe it won't tell me. Not without logging in, it won't, and I'm not going to log in today. <laughs> um, but we're probably running on 12 or just straight 13 um, of an iOS. So that's what those little badges are. Um, if your uh, actual, if your app has that symbol, so something like the mail has it there. I don't think I've got any others that need updating. Oh, here we go. This one called Photo Lab needs updating. Has a little dot there. Um, that'll let you know that it requires an update to be running the current version of its software. Um, if you don't update it, the settings, um, sorry, it might become buggy, um, meaning that your actual device won't be able to run the app very well, um, or it could even just be unsupported software, um, meaning that, again, the bugs won't get resolved. They'll just keep 
piling up if it creates more bugs. Again, don't be afraid of the term bugs. It just means that in the script, in the software, in the actual coding of the program, um, there was a mix up or a, you know, something didn't go right when they built it. Um, again, coding and software is incredibly um, intricate and there can be a lot that goes wrong quite easily. It's not unheard of. Um, so again, that's just what bugs is referring to. So if you see those badges, your app might need updating or it could even just have a notification. So again, much like the um, mail here, it's not necessarily that it needs updating. It's just letting you know that, hey, 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 I have 402 emails for you to look at. Please look at them. <laughs> That's all that means. Um, when managing apps for the iPhone, you'll go into settings. Oops, settings. Um, for an iPhone, it's under mobile, but it will be under something else for our device here. So let me skim through and hopefully I'll find it. Okay, one place to find it within is the iTunes and App Store. And within there, it will give you several options to view what can update and when and things like that. So for example, we've got for automatic downloads, selected we have app updates, so down here. So this will do it without me even needing to go through and tick yes, update, yes, update, yes, update. This will do it by itself. Um, and you can also, yeah, that's all I could do from there at least. I'm looking for, okay, so down here at the bottom, it'll go through after all the actual settings for your iPad, it'll run into um, the apps themselves. So say if we jump into the ABC Listen app here, so that's a way to listen to radio programming and podcasts. Um, it'll give you access or allow you access options here. So for example, we've got background app refresh on or off. That just means that while you've got the app open, but not on your front screen, um, it'll be able to refresh the feed and sort of continue downloading things if necessary. If you turn that off, it won't allow that anymore. So that's a way to do it, going through each and turning on and off these sort of settings. So Chrome, for example, um, allows you access things like, would you like it to access your microphone or your location? Um, if that's a yes or a no, you can change it to never as I have, or yes, sometimes, or only when I say yes, and things like that. So going through your actual app settings can be very helpful. Um, again, it's not gonna be sitting on any um, setting that is fully detrimental to your device. They want you to like the app. They're not going to put um, bizarre software on there and things like that. For a, let's jump onto my tablet here for Android. It has a password. Um, let's jump into settings. So for me, it's down here. It might be on the front page of your device. So through here, this is my front page, which you can tell by looking at these little digits. Actually, the front page is technically a search window. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that has a Google search option. Because it's an Android device that's supported by Google products, so Google's gonna be the thing that comes up first instead of Safari or Bing or Yahoo Search and things like that, or DuckDuckGo and all these other browsers. Um, Google's gonna be the one that comes up. So this is technically the home page because we've got our widgets, so our clock, for example, which I wanna move over. Oops, at the bottom now, never mind. Um, we've got our widgets and things like that. Apple products don't have widgets necessarily. Um, these are just extra smaller programs you can add to the front page of your device. Um, so I've got weather here and the time, as well as a little physical clock, the hands, and it's <laughs> very small. Um, but this is the front page, and you can see that by, I can show you, these little dots here. So you've got one, two, three, four pages total to view on your home screen. So this is the home screen. And as you swipe it through, you'll visit different pages. I'm going the wrong way again. So we go this way. So that's page two and page three. So I don't have much going on on this device. It's a lot cleaner than our iPad setup. I'll show you the iPad. Um, it has several pages. So iPad doesn't necessarily have a main home page. All of these are considered home pages um, because this, this is the the final page you see on the device, it means you've gone all the way back out, 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 out of all your apps. This is the home page. Um, so for me here, I've got one, two, three, four little pips, which means four pages can be viewed. And as you skim through the next page, it will move the pip 
showing where you are so you don't get too disorientated. You go, oh, I'm at the very end because the pip is the last one. Um, and you spin through like that. So if we look at, did I go through settings? I didn't go through settings on our Android device. Settings here. I might turn it up one more time. It's a little bit brighter. A little hard to tell what the screen will take. There we go. Um, every Android device is going to have something a little different. It's not nearly as cohesive as Apple iPad or Apple iPhone, um, which is kind of the draw for I Apple products. They all look the same. They're never changing too much. Um, things are where they should be. Whereas if you get many different Android devices like a Samsung, a Lenovo like I have here, um, any other non-Apple uh, device, they can look a little different. So that can be tricky to pick up right away. Um, but if you persevere, you'll get used to it eventually. They've all got similar um, familiar things. So for example, the settings being a lovely long list with some bright icons and then a quick descriptor of what to look at. So for example, um, I love the Android version because uh, apps and notifications is right here. So it's one to be the fourth one down, nice and easy to find. So if we open that up, It'll show you can offer all your apps, so see all 50. It'll talk about screen time, um, what apps can give off notifications. So these mix from those little red badges that we saw on the corner of the apps, anything from that little drop down box, which is called a banner. Um, and then a, if you've closed your screen, turned it off, it'll be a push notification when it turns up on your screen and lights it up and says, this person mentioned you in a comment or you got a text from this or this app needs updating. Um, that's a push notification where it's sort of like notifying you by sending you a little message that way. Um, you can turn those off. So notifications here, I currently have on for all apps or you can start turning them off. So I'll allow notification dots, which is what they're calling badges here, not to get confusing. <laughs> um, and then you can decide what else you'd like to do with that. So the cool thing I generally say about, um, do you want to get an Apple device or an Android device? Um, Apple, again, is extremely simple to use. Um, it it's sort of, um, it's more ergonomically friendly, user friendly, beginner friendly. Um, but the brilliant thing about Android devices is that they have far more customizability. So you can change things to be whatever suits your needs. And it has far more options, which can be quite overwhelming for some people. You don't, um, you might get, you know, a little too much out of this device. If you're just looking at things like browsing the internet, hopping on emails, things like that, an iPad is brilliant. If you'd like to do a little bit more and get a bit more bang for your buck, I'd say it's going to be an Android tablet. Um, and the price point is great as well for Android tablets for the most part. Um, Apple like to charge a premium for their products, which is, you know, it's fair. It depends what you feel like. Excellent, so that's how you update your apps and permissions and you can allow, so say if I were to look at um, daily art, once again, you can talk about data usage, you can see how much it's used, you can uninstall it from here as well. So similar to jumping on the app store and clicking uninstall, you can also do it from the settings. Um, talking about notifications and you can also force stop it. Now, depending on your own Android device, these might be different. Um, but this is the general sort of gist of the information that it should offer. Um, it also can offer how much battery it's been using and how much time spent on it. So you can kind of get those cool little analytics if you're interested in that sort of thing. Excellent. Let's jump back to our presentation and I'll skim through the rest of it. I know we've all got somewhere to be, I'm sure. <laughs> Excellent. Share screen. I'm just saying what I'm doing out loud. Here we go. Back again. So let's jump through. Did I hold up? Did I skim past the second one? <laughs> I think I did. Organizing, yes. So we're talking about um, pages just before. For those who are new to this, let's talk about what it looks like when you are moving an app around and organizing things. So we'll go back on the iPad because it's fairly simple on the iPad. Um, when you're looking to move an app, so this is your uh, dock. So the place where your apps will sit and stay Whereas this is your this is your home page, which can move from different pages and the apps can change as you flip through. Um, if you'd like to move an app, the thing to do is holding it down. So let's grab, let's grab something fun. <laughs> let's grab the ABC Listen app and let's move it to another page. 
So with iPad as well as Android, the way to pick up an app is to hold down your finger on it. Hold, yeah, there we go. Until the little apps start wiggling. This is what they look like on an Apple device. They wiggle, they look scared, they're gonna get moved. <laughs> and they'll come up with a little cross symbol to delete them. Um, deleting and uninstalling, it's hard to say if it's the same thing. I might even check to see if that's the case. Um, okay, that's just free ranging. So if you were to do a quick hold and press, it brings up this extra settings. So I believe with Apple, because they want to keep it very simple, just pressing the little cross that comes up will delete it and uninstall it. Uh, open device, I don't know. One moment, thank you for waiting. <laughs> okay, hold on, I'm having a bit more trouble than I thought. <laughs> Opens it again. Thank you all for waiting so patiently here. Okay, come on, let's be nice. There we go. I held it for about three seconds there. I need to update my page. Um, so holding it for about three seconds will get them to wiggle. Um, and from here, they're free to move around. So if you hold one down, click and drag, it should lift. It's only such a slight lift. You may not even notice. I'm gonna be able to do it there. My finger's not working for. There we go, it's lifted off. And from here, we can move it around. The apps will shuffle automatically. If you wanna leave it here, for example, it'll move out the way or on this side, or if you'd like to leave it on a different page, you just drag it to the side until it brings over the page you want it to move to. Um, I'll lift out of that one. If you drop an app, there you go. If you drop an app on top of another app, it will become a, um, a group or a folder. So if I do that with this app here, it'll open up and it's sort of listing itself automatically as an entertainment folder. So if I leave it there, it's in that little box and it's tucked away. So if I close that out just by pressing the home button, that stops them from wiggling. So they're back to being solid, movable. You click it again, it'll take me out of that little box. And now I've got this little entertainment box here that I can open up with a tap if my finger works. And there we go. So that's one way to store and manage your apps. So if you're finding your space is getting a bit cluttered, you can start holding and dragging them Again, mine's not being good. I opened that up. Holding, holding for longer. There we go, now they're wiggling. Um, I think mine's a newer version that I'm not used to yet where it'll give you these extra options. Clicking, dragging, and you can move multiple apps while they're wiggling. So it's not just the one app. You can go, okay, I like the ice cream store. Let's put it down here. There we go. Um, one thing to keep in mind with Apple, um, they've got a dock down here on the... It'll be the, you're facing it the right hand side. There will be a little segmented area and these are your recent apps. These are apps you've opened recently, maybe your favorite apps you've used. Um, and these will alter and change depending on what you've opened most recently. On this side is the dock and these are the apps you've sort of cemented to stay there. So these are your easy access apps. So something like system settings, um, a browser or two browsers as we've got here, a camera, a file folder, app store, um, you don't have to have all of these. So say if you want to get rid of the camera, well, not get rid of the camera, but put it somewhere else, because as you can see, the camera is an integral part of the actual device and does not have that little cross symbol in this right-hand corner. <laughs> so say if I really didn't like an app, let's say I better delete one that I know I put on there. <laughs> Let's say we don't want Stitcher. Stitcher is just another podcast app and I can always re-download it if someone really wants it on this device. Actually, maybe I won't delete that one. <laughs> Paula likes to use that and she's got her podcast on Stitcher. I'll talk about the podcast too if you'd like. Um, I'll get rid of one like... Oh goodness, sorry. Siri's talking at me now. Let's do... I'll get rid of, let's say, again, I don't want to get rid of these because I don't know who's put these on. Um, let's open up the ABC Listen app. I put that on here, so I don't even, someone put that on here and I can re-download it. Um, the way to uninstall an app on Apple, other than going on the app store and clicking uninstall, is just to click the little X here and it'll delete it. It'll say, 
are you sure you'd like to delete? Deleting this app will also delete its data. So keep in mind that if you delete an app, it won't remember what you saved on that app, which means that even if you were to re-download the app later, it's not gonna have all the information you had previously, which can be a good thing if you're looking at being, you know, looking at privacy. Um, can be a bad thing if you've saved a lot of sort of work on there, if you've written notes and things, they're not gonna be there for the next time. So we just click delete and that goes away. Again, clicking the home button to stop them from wiggling and they're solid again. Okay, so that's managing your apps, moving them around, deleting them, keeping an eye on what you're using. Um, and here we go, let me share my screen one more time. I'll get back into our PowerPoint and we'll whiz right through this. Uh, here we go, cool. So we've looked at organizing our apps, um, our data. Let's have a look at some recommendations. So, um, Great thing to have on your mobile, especially, is a banking app. This way you can move money around quite easily. Um, it's very secure. They have several different um, security settings added to it. So banking apps are very secure. Um, get the one that you're obviously allied with, um, ANZ, ComBank, Westpac, just the ones that came up first. Um, and they're you know, one of the big banks, the big three. Um, so, a banking app, brilliant to have. If you've not got that on your phone already, you can download that again from the App Store or the Play Store. Um, next is email. Um, your favorite, so something like um, your iPad will come with its own mail. It's just called mail, as we've seen. It's got that, all those little badges on it, 402 emails that I've not looked at. Um, but some people find them to be quite bulky, um, unfamiliar. So getting your dedicated um, account uh, set up with a specific email group um, is great to do. So if you've got Gmail, get a Gmail um, app. If you're using Yahoo, use Yahoo. Outlook for Hotmail and Live and Outlook users. Um, and that way it's going to be far more familiar to what your desktop uh, version of the mail looks like. Um, and it's going to be a lot more familiar. So all apps, so phones, sorry, again, your device will come with a pre-installed mail app, very generic, um, but I do recommend hopping on and getting the one that your actual mailbox is associated with, so it works. Um, next thing to recommend, music. We've got Apple Music, Spotify, and SoundCloud, respectively. Um, each uh, their own sort of subscription, other than SoundCloud, which doesn't require a subscription to use. Um, Apple Music, um, does require a fee in order to listen to the music. I think it has fully replaced iTunes at this point. I'd have to look into that, but it is their subscription service. So getting up-to-date music and downloading it to your phone. Same thing with Spotify. I use Spotify and love it. I swear by it. Um, I do pay a subscription fee each, every three months I pay one and um, I use it every day. I love it. You can um, use it for free music. The only thing to keep in mind is that every three or four songs you listen to, an ad will play, which can become, you know, quite annoying if you're, say, playing music and listening it with other people, or if you're listening to a podcast and you want to just get through a few of them, and then a big ad comes on that is sort of unrelated to the the content you're listening to. Um, that became a bit too much for me, and I jumped on Spotify and started paying for it about four years back and I've never changed since. I love it so much. Spotify offers um, everything for free um, and it'll host a lot of um, individual indie developer, sorry, what do I say here? Um, sort of new and upcoming music. So not necessarily well-established artists on there, um, but a great place to explore and find new stuff. Um, and much like Apple Podcasts, sorry, yeah, Apple Podcasts, which I'll talk about in a second, um, and Spotify and SoundCloud, they all also offer um, podcasts to listen to as well, which I'll talk about now. Um, here we have Up Up, the ABC Listen app, which we've looked at on the iPad with moving it around. We have the Google Podcasts app, and I forgot to list it here, but it's the Apple Podcasts app as well. So depending what device you're using, it'll come pre-installed with either the Google Podcasts app, which you can delete, it's not integral to the actual app, and then the Apple Podcast app, which also can be deleted. Again, not integral, but it does come pre-installed as software. Um, I love the ABC Listen app. It keeps all the ABC shows in one place. And there are a lot of them. I think it's about 50 something total. Um, and that includes live radio as well as um, pre-produced podcast shows that they've made. Um, brilliant. I talked about um, apps last week. So if you're interested, I'll tell you how to find that video 
at the end of this one. Um, and then Apple and Google, not too much of a difference between them. They all have the same content. They're essentially just hosts for podcasts and podcast creators put them out onto all these different platforms for viewing. Excellent. Um, now we'll look at, oh, of course, the best podcast to offer. <laughs> Very own podcast that we offer at the library. Paula and Jane make this one. Um, literary anything. They review books, come up with brilliant insights. They've got their fingers on the pulse of the publishing industry. It's really cool to hear their insights and what they've got sort of hiding up their sleeve. And it's well produced and just sounds wonderful. So if you're viewing any podcast app, type in literally anything podcast. You can even type it into Google and find it. Um, and you can listen right away either from your computer browser or your device. Um, podcasts, I highly recommend anyone who's not tried them yet. They're a lot of fun. They're brilliant to walk around with and just do chores or go for a walk or a hike and listen to. A brilliant time, absolutely. And you'll learn something new every time. Um, and then the next two apps I want to recommend are Libby and our library's SA app. So because we're talking about apps, how could I miss out on Libby? Um, Libby is a library app for dip borrowing anything online. So that's digital ebooks as well as audio books. Um, you can get it again anywhere. You can get an app downloaded, so your phone or your tablet device. Um, you log in with your library card details and you just look for um, South Australian Public Libraries and then look for City of Marion Libraries to find us as well. Yeah, brilliant. Um, you can download books, um, listen to ebooks through that way, um, and they're all done through your library card, so it's totally free. Um, uh, other apps like, ooh, what's it called? <laughs> Audible, because it's a very famous audiobook um, program. Audible will ask you to pay for your books. Um, and of course, audiobooks can get quite expensive because the production of them is so high. Um, and someone has to sit there reading for about three or four or eight hours, however long the book is. Um, so they get quite expensive. So it's brilliant to have free audiobooks available through the library. So I highly recommend checking that out. Everyone should have the Libby app. It's a beautiful app. It's really easy to use. I personally love it. I'll show you if you'd like. <laughs> so I've got it on this one. I've got it on my Apple device. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love Libby. <laughs> Don't know how to promote it any harder than that. Here we go. Libby here. Isn't it sweet? And of course, it's, I've not signed up with it yet. So it asks, do you have a library card? Yes or no? And we'll get started. Um, I find it extremely easy to use. Very clean app. Um, so it's easy to recommend to people because it looks so nice and is so easy to use. So that's free with your library card. Again, if you find that you can't log in with your library card, give us a call or come in and visit us and we'll sort that out for you either over the phone or in person. Again, we are open again. Very exciting. Next one is the library's SA app. So um, Libby is for viewing content and listening to audiobooks, whereas the library's SA app will manage your account. Um, and you can even scan a barcode to find if the book that you're looking for is in stock within the library service. Um, it does go through all libraries. Again, we are a one network now. So all of SA libraries or SA public libraries are all connected through the SA libraries app and you can search up what's in the catalog, where to find things, place holds. Um, and yeah, so search for new or reserved books and things like that. Um, it's great to access your account on the go. You can even view it while you're in the library and just start putting things on hold as you're walking around and go, oh, I want the next book in that series. How about that DVD? Is that out yet? You can just do that all on your phone. Of course, we have the terminals here that you can use with the actual computer, so it's very cool to have it handy. Excellent. So without further ado, oh, here we go. I have a question and it's coming from Crystal. It says, does the library support the Belinda app? So Belinda um, I've not been trained to use it myself, so I've not actually seen if it's supported in our library. Um, Crystal, what do you normally use your Belinda app for and what support might you need from us? That's what I'll ask just to begin with. Um, is it just for listening to audiobooks or is it for viewing books? I've not actually played with it recently. Um, I, I remember the symbol, it's a green, a green B, I think it is. <laughs> it may not be. <laughs> Um, I'd have to check with someone here if we do that, actually. But again, I've not been trained to use the Belinda app. I'm not sure. I've never been asked. So that's quite cool. I have to look into that for you, Crystal, and um, we'll catch up on Tuesday with that. I don't have it, my friend, in New South Wales recommended. Okay. Um, 
so your friend has recommended it to you. Brilliant. Well, if it's for listening to audiobooks and viewing ebooks, um, you're certainly welcome to download it and try it. But what we actually support and what the library has content signed up with and subscriptions to is the Libby app. So looking up the Libby app in the app store and then looking for the SA Public Libraries group and you'll find all the content that we've paid for. Um, all of us throughout the network have put money in to get these copies because of course, while it's nice to have one copy of an ebook, we've only got so many licenses to give out. So at one time, the book can only be with one person until it gets returned after the 21 day period, which is how long you get for the book. So for listening to audiobooks, okay. Um, yeah, that does sound familiar, the Belinda app. I don't know if we've been using it recently. The one we've been um, recommending is Libby. So give Libby a go. Also download Belinda and see how far you can get with it. But as far as I know, we've not signed up anything with Belinda at this point. I'd have to check and I will go out and ask somebody when I'm done here. Um, and I'll figure out the answer for you. I'll, I'll give you an email for sure. Brilliant. Okay, so Libby app, big thumbs up and I'll be able to go back so you can have a view of it. Libby, lovely sort of maroon and teal color. Um, and you'll be able to find that both in the App Store and the Google Play Store. Excellent. Thank you for your questions, everyone. I've been, I've had a lovely time again today. Let's talk about where you can find us. So we are open again. Um, the building at the point that we are in the world in SA, we can only fit 10 people in the building at once. So sort of limited interaction still. We're all still social distancing and keeping safe out there. So well done to everyone for following the rules. We've done so well. Um, but if you'd like to stay connected with us and find out what's coming up next, please check out first and foremost our Facebook page. That's City of Marion Libraries um, on Facebook, as well as our Instagram page for a bit more fun content. Um, same name at City of Marion Libraries. Our Facebook, you can have a look at what events we've got going on, any current updates. We can post to let you know um, what's going on, what's new. So check out Facebook first. You don't need a Facebook account to look at it. You can just type in Facebook City of Marion Libraries and that's how you'll find it. Um, but then you can also check out our What's On page on the City of Marion website. So the actual homepage for the City of Marion, you can check out um, what's on within the library. So you go up to the top bar, you click on the tab venues and you go down to libraries and then you go down to what's on and that's how you'll find what's happening, what's next. Um, that's things like um, we've got our digital, um, we've got mention of digital mentoring, which is what I do on Tuesdays. Um, Be connected, of course. We've got Bricks and Bytes, which is our live show for kids. Um, to do with science and building and learning all fun new things. It's a lot of fun. Emma and Ben run that one. Um, as well as Library Through the Lens, which Tracy runs. You might you might have met Tracy before, some of you. Um, and she's got all these brilliant programs on and they're all done through webinars at this point. So you can join them. They're all free. Um, yeah, I think they've all been free. So they're very easy to just sign up, jump on and watch. And they're brilliant just to have in the background even. Um, I love looking at the authors. We've had some brilliant poets and writers on. So check that out on our website. And you can also subscribe to our Library Leap Messenger. We send out an email every month um, with all of our major updates and new events coming up. And you can sign up to that just by going through um, our work, not work work, um, through the catalog page. And it's on the left hand bar. Excellent. Or you can visit us or give us a call on 83756755 for any extra questions or comments. Brilliant. So that's been me, everyone. Thank you all so much for attending today. You've been such a great group. Um, I look forward to talking to you more next week um, when we'll talk more about online technology. Beautiful. Thanks, everyone. Bye.